Hi, welcome back to the channel. Let's use this example to further understand how to treat series and parallel resistors. In case you missed our last lessons where we introduced series and parallel resistors, please do not hesitate to check the description below. To ensure you get our subsequent lessons, I'll advise you subscribe to our channel. That way you'll be telling YouTube you love what we're doing and you also ensure you get our lessons anytime we post them. Thank you for staying with us and let's get to class. Our example says that for this circuit shown in the figure below, we should calculate the value of Rx. Here is our resistor Rx. Here is Rx. We should calculate the value of this resistor Rx. And B says we should find the current flowing in each of the four resistors. First and foremost, let's get started and let's draw the circuit first. Now here is the circuit we drawn. Now if the power in the circuit P is the same thing as 2.5 kilowatts and the voltage across the circuit is 250 volts obviously we know that p is equals to voltage that is power is equals to voltage times current so that our current is i my current i will be the same thing as p over v which is same thing as 2.5 kilowatts is same thing as 2500 watts over 250 volts 250 here is 1 250 in 2500 that's 10 amps so i have a current of 10 amps flowing in this circuit so i can have my current of 10 amps flowing in this circuit now if i have a current of 10 amps flowing in this circuit there should be an effective resistance in this circuit the effective resistance of the circuit rt should be such that 250 from Ohm's law, Ohm's law tells us that V is equal to IR, so that my 250 will be the same thing as I, which is 10, times the effective resistance RT. Now my effective resistance RT will come from, if you look at the circuit carefully, you see that there are two parallel resistance in parallel with, in series with another set of two parallel resistors, so that it will come from, let's label our resistors, this is, let's call this R1, R2, R3, and of course Rx. R1 is in parallel to R2, and both of them are now in series. That will be an addition to R3 in parallel with Rx. Now, the first thing I'll do is I'll solve for R1 and R2 that are in parallel. Let's have their value since we have the value for R1 and R2. This will come from R1 times r2 over r1 plus r2 please do endeavor to check our lesson on how to treat parallel resistors we explained this in there now so that my r1 in parallel with r2 will come from 15 times 10 over 15 plus 10 that's equals to 150 over 225 5 here will be 5, 5 in 150, that's 30, 5 here is 1, 5 in 30 is 6. So that R1 in parallel with R2 will be the same thing as 6 ohms. Now if R1 in parallel with R2 is 6 ohms, is 6 ohms. Now, my RT, which is R total, will be the same thing as 6 ohms plus the set of R3 in parallel with Rx. Oh, I to have looked for R total. Now, let's see R total. Now, from my V is equals to IR, here, let's call this equation. Let's call this equation 1, and let's call this equation 2. Let me label my equations. Now, from equation 1, from 1, I can deduce that 250 over 10 is equals to RT. So that my RT is the same thing as 25 ohms. 10 here is 1. 10 in 250 obviously is 25. That's 25 ohms. So now I can use this value conveniently in equation 2. Now let's, let me put another slide. So that already we know that RT 
we now know that RT is the same thing as 25 ohms. And we know that the same RT is equal to 6 plus the parallel combination of R3 and Rx. Now, so that 25 ohms, 25 is equal to 6 plus R3 in parallel with what? Rx. Now, so that 25 minus 6, if we collect like terms, will be the same thing as 19 and will be equals to R3 in parallel with what? Rx. Now, so that 19 now is equal to R3 in parallel with Rx is the same thing as R3 times Rx over R3 plus Rx. So that my 19 will be the same thing as what is R3? Let's see the figure, the value for R3. R3 is 38. It will be same thing as 38 times Rx over 38 plus Rx. Now let's cross multiply. 19 into 38 plus Rx will be the same thing as 38 Rx. From my calculator, 19 times 38, that's 7 two two plus nineteen rx equals thirty eight rx so that's seven two two equals thirty eight rx minus nineteen rx so that seven two two is the same thing as nineteen rx let's divide both sides by nineteen Rx is equals to 38 ohms. Now the value of Rx is 38 ohms. So in my circuit here, I can replace Rx with 38 ohms. Now if Rx here is 38 ohms, and my second question says we should find question B says I should find the current flowing in each of the four resistors, that is I have 10 ohms, sorry, I have 10, that is, I have 10 amps flowing to this node. Now, what current flows in this arm and what current flows here? Let's tag this I1. Let's call this I2. Now, let's call this I3. And I also call what I have here Ix. Now, because I3, R3 and Rx are both equal, they are both at 8 ohms. Definitely, I3 and Ix will be equal. Now, and I have a current of 10 flowing through in here, getting to this node. Then, I must have 10 divided by 2. I3 and Ix will be equals to 5. Now, let's solve for I3 and Ix first. We've said both of them are equal, so that I3 will be equals to Ix, and will be the same thing as 10 over 2, which is equals to 5, 5 amps. 5 amps. Now, to solve for I1 and I2, we'll use the voltage divider principle, or sorry, we we'll use the current divider principle, since we have just two resistors that are in parallel, we can easily use the current divider principle. Here I have redrawing those, the circuit. Here is 15, and here is 10. 10 ohms, 15 ohms, and 10 ohms. And I have a current of 10 amps flowing to this node. So that using the voltage, the current divider principle, my I1 will be the same thing as 10 over 15 plus 10. Everything times 10, which will be the same thing as 10 over 25 times 10. 5 in 10 here is 2. 5 in 25 is 5, 5 here is 1, 5 here is 2. So that I have this as 4 amps. Now to solve for I2 also, we still employ the current divider principle. So that solving for I2, we'll have 15 now, 15 over 15 plus 10 
times 10 amps. Now that means I have 15 over 25 times 10. 5 year is 3, 5 year is 5, 5 year is 1, 5 year is 2, which is equals to 6, 6 amps. Now with, with this, we've been able to solve the question. We've been able to define that our I1 is the same thing as 4 amps. I2 is the same thing as 6 amps. And we deduce that our I3 And we deduce that our I3 is equals to I4 or IX and is the same thing as 5, 5 amps. I hope you understand this and if you have any questions or challenges, please will appreciate to use our comment section and post your comments. Thank you for staying with us and see you in our next class.